Welcome to the final part of our series where we are spreading some surfacing love by showing you how to model this rose in SOLIDWORKS. We're going to wrap up our series by modeling in some randomly patterned thorns and we'll drop in some custom appearances to give this rose some color. We're going to use a curve driven pattern so let's first create the curve. Throughout this series we've been using the spline on surface tool which we will use once again for our patterned curve. Enter the 3D sketch environment and select the Spline on Surface tool in the drop-down under Spline. I'm going to create a corkscrew-shaped spline around this top portion of the stem, and I'm going to make sure the bottom point of the spline is coincident with this sharp edge. Later on, I'll create another spline on surface that needs to be coincident with this point. And the top point needs to intersect the front plane for one of our thorn sketches. So I'm going to set a relation called on plane between this point and the front plane. Now exit the sketch. As you can see, this sketch is difficult to see with the default gray color, so let's change the sketch color. In the history tree, right click on the sketch and click on sketch color to customize. And let's go with green for this sketch. Now let's create a reference plane coincident with this top point and parallel to the right plane. This is where we will sketch our thorns profile in preparation for a surface boundary. Sketch on this newly created plane and snap the center point of an ellipse to the top point of our 3D curve. And I'll go ahead and set a few dimensions to the ellipse. Now on the front plane, sketch the outline shape of the thorn using a few splines. The boundary tool allows you to create boundaries to points, so I'm going to sketch a point at the tip of the thorn. Under the Surfaces Command Manager, you'll find the Boundary Surface tool. It can sometimes be difficult to select a point that is a part of a line sketch. To combat this, you can right-click on the point and click Select Other to scroll through the available selections near your cursor. With this point selected, next select the ellipse sketch to bring up a preview of the boundary. Under Direction 2, we can control the shape of the thorn with our outline sketch. To select individual lines that lie within a single sketch, you can use what's called the Selection Manager. Either click on the line you'd like to use to automatically bring up the Selection Manager, or right-click in the box under Direction 2 in the Property Manager and click Selection Manager to bring up this tool. This preview looks good, so I'll select the green check mark to build the surface. Now I want to make sure this thorn fully intersects the surfaces of the stem, so let's use the Extend Surface tool, which you'll find here in the Surfaces tab. Select the edge you'd like to extend and we'll extend this thorn 0.015 inches. And we'll convert this to a solid using the Filled Surface tool. Select this open edge and ensure the merge result and Create Solid options are checked. As you'll see, this thorn body is now in the Solid Bodies folder in the History tree, which helps us know our thorn is now officially a solid. Now let's unhide our stem solid and in the Features tab navigate to the Curve Driven Pattern tool under Linear Pattern. To create the pattern, first select the curve, then select the curve's associated normal face. Under the Bodies option, select the Thorn body. At first we will pattern this equally spaced nine times, but under the Instances to Skip section, I'll select a few random instances 
to remove them from the operation. This gives the thorn pattern a more random look. I'll repeat this pattern on the next section of the stem, making sure my 3D spline is snapped to the end point of the first 3D spline, and this time I'll pattern the last instance from the first curve driven pattern. I'll see you in a bit. Now with all of our thorns modeled, we'll finish this up with a few fillets. A 0.075 inch fillet around these sharp edges on the stem. Now I'm going to use the combine tool to combine all of my thorns to the stem body. and I'll add a 0.05 inch fillet where the thorns intersect the stem. To wrap up the series, let's quickly add some appearances to the rows. It's easy to add custom appearances to models using a reference image by first applying an appearance that already references an image, such as this polished ash wood appearance which I'll apply to the whole model. Double click the recently added appearance in the Appearances tab of the Display Manager, select the Advanced button, and under Image File Path you can browse to reference a different image. In this case I downloaded a red velvet texture to simulate the rose petal appearance. I'll repeat this operation, this time applying the appearance only to the stem and calyx body. And I'll reference this leafy texture I downloaded. Lastly, I'll apply a rosewood appearance to the thorn, thorn pattern, and thorn fillet features. Notice the hierarchy in which these appearances were applied. Feature appearances fall higher in the hierarchy than body appearances, which fall higher than whole model appearances. Keep this in mind to avoid accidentally applying an appearance over another. And there you have it. While modeling this highly organic form takes quite a bit of work, I think you'll agree it is quite literally a labor of love. I hope you've walked away from this series with the ability to implement a few of these surfacing tools on other challenging forms. Thanks for watching.